Hey guys and welcome back to another Akintosh tutorial and on this particular video we are going to check out how to enable QuickSync on our Akintosh and to see if it performs better or not. Now spoiler alert is that it makes a huge difference. And this video is sponsored by NordVPN, a VPN service available for almost any platform with servers in 56 countries at an affordable price. Check out the link below for more details. And we are back. So before we start with the tutorial itself, just a few notes right over here. One of which is for those of you that missed my previous videos regarding my PC build and also the Akintosh installation. I will leave a link down below with all the components that I'm using on this machine right over here. Also one link with the installation guide for macOS on this particular build. It also contains my EFI folder that you guys may use to see if it works on your system or not. And if you use that guide, you will then just need two steps that I will show you right away uh, to enable Quick sync. So first of all, we will need to download a text which is called Shiki and I will leave a link down below directly for the text creator page so that you guys can download. Once we have that text, I did place it uh, on my desktop, but you guys can just leave it on the download folder or etc. I just leave it there because it was easier for me to record this particular video. Once that's opened, I will need to open Clover configuration and then select to mount my Akintosh EFI partition, open the EFI partition and the EFI folder. Then I will need to locate the Clover folder, Kext, other as you guys can see on screen and then I will paste this shiki text right in this particular folder. Now I will need to go back to the Clover folder and then open the config pill list right over there. Once I have my config pill list open as you guys may see on screen I will need to select the boot tab and then on the custom flags I will write shiki gva equal 12 and then press enter. After that just save the Clover configurator file and restart the computer. And basically that is it. If everything goes well we will have QuickSync enabled. Now one tip uh, that I would give to you guys just a quick way to see if we have uh, QuickSync enabled or not there is an app called Mac X Video Converter that we can use before and after just to check out if we have enabled quick sync or not. If everything goes well, we will see that hardware uh, video decoder enabled or something similar on the screen. If it didn't work, then we will have uh, the word in red stating that we have no hardware uh, encoding available. And now that we have quick sync enabled, let me share with you guys just a few quick uh, results because if you are here probably you are looking for a way of speeding up your Akintosh especially in what concerns video rendering and especially in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, in this particular case on the Akintosh. So what I'm going to do is to share with you guys three tests one with no quick sync on this particular Akintosh, one with quick sync and then one on my Mac Mini late 2012 i7 quad core so that we can make a comparison here. Now I could do here a very famous test which is Bruce X. I won't do that. There are a lot of tests regarding that particular benchmark and in my opinion that does not impact or doesn't uh, show us the reality at least those of you that are looking for real examples what I will do is to share one of my videos one of the latest ones that I did and this is actually a real world uh, test and I'm talking about a video with 11 minutes and 41 seconds which is somewhere the average of my videos. Now in terms of the video itself uh, it has just the color correction and a few transitions nothing special and you can check that video on YouTube it was uploaded a few days ago so you will be able to check it out. Now I'll be using Final Cut Pro 10 10.4 latest version so that's 
uh, we can compare the same operating system version, the same Final Cut Pro 10 version on every single machine. Now, starting with the Akintosh without quick sync, which it was as it was after the installation. As you guys can see right over there, the timeline with 11 minutes and 41 uh, um, seconds, we will have 7 minutes and 52 seconds to render that particular project. Now, have in mind that there will be a failure there in all the tests because I did stop the stopwatch after the video was exported, but we are talking about 4-5 seconds across all tests. So you can uh, pause the video and check the exact second, but we are talking about 7 minutes and 52 seconds to render this particular file without Quick sync. Now, when we enable quick sync on the Akintosh, if you guys take a look at the screen, we are talking about 3 minutes and 37 seconds, which is, as you guys have seen, less than half the time that we took without quick sync enabled. So it's really easy, as you guys can see, and it's totally worth it because we will get less than half the time that we would without quick sync enabled. Now, just out of curiosity, I also tested out on my late 2012 Mac Mini. One of the greatest Mac Minis. The 2014 is a crappy machine in terms of multi-core apps at least, and hopefully Apple would release something new. But that's just me rambling. In terms of results, if you guys take a look at the screen, we will get 7 minutes and 28 seconds rendering the exact same file, which means that the Mac Mini is a, a machine with a few years now, completely outdated compared to my Akintosh, but it has quick sync and it will render the video faster than the Akintosh without quick sync uh, enabled. So this was just uh, so that you guys could take a look and compare some of the results right over here, what you can expect in terms of real world performance, and that's about it. I took longer than I wanted for this particular video, which as you guys saw was something very simple. Hopefully this video will help you guys that have uh, Akintoshes and you want to have a better performance on video editing. Hopefully this will be helpful. All the credits will be down below as usual. A big thumbs up for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up as well. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.